Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Just Another 20-something with me, Marissa. It has been a minute. (laughs) I'm so sorry about last week, and, you know, there was no new episode. I was very upset because, honestly, I want to try and keep... (laughs) I wanted to be, like, super consistent, always posting, you know, and, like, I'm still going to strive to do that. It's not like I'm going to take breaks all the time. But I was just so sad because I thought that I could get it up and I couldn't. I seriously could not. Um, last week was just so extremely busy for me. Um, I guess a little life update. Um, so when I first started my job, it was supposed to be just a part-time position, which um, I was fine with. But at the same time, like I knew that I wanted to eventually get more hours. And so thankfully... I'm getting more hours, so yay for me. But now that means I only have two days off, which is, you know, normal. And so I have to take those two times off to really, like, plan around my episodes. Um, I can obviously do it some of the days that I am working, but my work schedule is just changing all the time and just kind of depends. Like, last week, for example... I worked six days in a row (laughs) and that was a lot. I was very tired. I did not feel like, you know, busting out an episode. And to be honest with you, I also didn't know what I wanted my episode to be because I do plan it out ahead of time. But sometimes when I get to that week, I'm like, you know what? I don't even want to talk about that. Like this isn't on my mind right now. So I honestly was just struggling. I was like, I don't know what I want to talk about. I don't know when I'm going to do it and when I'm going to edit and how all this is going to happen. And so I like waited, you know, I was working and a time didn't come up where I could perfectly do it. And then I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to do it Sunday and then I'll post on Monday. It'll be, you know, it'll be a lot in one day, but I get off at three. So I have the rest of the evening to record and edit and I should be good. Um, But then we had one of my family friends come over and I love her. And so we were chatting the night away and I was like, damn it. (laughs) Um, Never mind. That didn't happen. And so alas, no episode last week. And so I'm so sorry. But I hope since I gave you guys a week, maybe you guys have caught up on all of the episodes thus far. Um, We're into the 20s now, which is crazy. So there's a lot of episodes to listen to. I hope you guys are all enjoying it. I'm still obviously having an amazing time recording and posting the episodes. Um, I think it's so fun and I love having more and more guests on. I think like as time goes on, I really love exploring the ideas of having maybe a second host if someone would be into that with me. Obviously, it's it's um, a commitment and it's hard to do, but I think it would be um, I think it'd be really fun to have a second host along with me. I mean, why not? Why not? You know, make this podcast whatever I want it to be. It's my podcast, <laughs> and so I think that would be fun. There's still a lot of things in the works with the podcast, and so I hope you guys are just enjoying it, and we can move forward from there. But um, yeah, so that was my little update. Um, I've just been busy. I've been really, really busy, which is good. I like to be busy. I'm very much a person that if I'm not busy, I am not doing good. (laughs) Like if I am just doing nothing, that is not how I thrive. I thrive with having a plan pretty much every single day. And I even have to plan out the days that I'm not going to have a plan, if that makes sense. Like when I look at my week, I'm like, okay, plan, 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 rest day, plan, 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 because that's just how I like to roll. That's how I like to go. I like to be constantly going. So this week was a little calmer. Um, like I said, today I'm having the opportunity to finally record. Let's see, it is Friday, and so then it'll be going up on Monday. So it's an exciting time. I'm really excited. Um for today's episode as well. So before I get into it, obviously you guys read the title of today's episode. Um, I just would like to say that I am fully copying what we said. <laughs> Literally their last episode was talking about catfish stories. And I'm not trying to like copy them, even though obviously I'm completely copying them. 
it's just, it was such a good episode. It was so funny. I love Catfish. If you guys have never watched the show Catfish, it's on Hulu and you need to watch it. I've been obsessed with Catfish for years. And I think it's so interesting just like, you know, those people who do Catfish people, like, who are you? Like, I just can't even imagine, like... I just, I just can't imagine, I just can't imagine being that person who's just like, I'm going to pretend to be someone else and trick someone else to fall in love with me and then I'll fall in love with them and then, uh uh-oh, what am I going to do? Like, I just, it doesn't make any sense to me. So anyway, (laughs) um, I thought it would be great if we could also read some catfish stories. Um, I'm obviously on Reddit. I feel like now I'm a Reddit girl. Is this is this what my podcast is turning into? Just constantly Reddit. But see, this is the greatest thing because I obviously don't have a huge following like what we said. So they just get all of their catfish stories sent to them because they have like thousands of millions of listeners or whatever. Um, I don't have that. So I have to search in depth for these stories. Um, but luckily, you know, Reddit exists and people will post everything on this site. So I'm excited. I haven't even read them. So we're just going to jump in and we're going to hope that they're good. Um, If they're terrible, then, you know, I'm going to probably pause this and restart the episode, but we're going for it. So let's just get into it. So this first person starts off. I guess it was sometime in 2008. I believe I'd just given in and tried to use online dating. Plenty of fish. Oh, I heard bad things about that app, but go off. Okay. For the first time, it had been a couple of weeks of dead end messaging and receiving unsolicited perverse offers from obese mid fifties women. Oh my gosh. Who is, (laughs) wait, who am I, who is narrating this? Is this a guy? Okay. Um, when I'd gotten into what seemed like an okay convo with a decent prospect. Her pics seemed touched up like some 1980s glamour shots, but she looked a lot like Alyssa Milano. Oh my gosh, who is this person? Because Alyssa Milano is like an older woman. (laughs) Like, very beautiful woman. Gorgeous. But like, how old are you? This is, you know, when I was talking about why does Reddit put the, um the gender and the age you know what now I need to freaking know because I have no idea how old you are and I don't know if you're a man or a woman so this is really throwing me off okay so I figured how bad could she be I can't miss this opportunity her messaging and texting gave me the impression that she would live up to her profile because she was well-educated responsible single mother it said she was a 33 year old and recently divorced with no drama she worked as a legal assistant and worked about four to five times a week She also had a thin build, according to the bio, and looked thin athletic in the pics and stated being 5'2". Okay, so I'm getting a little fat phobia from this person. Um, I feel like they do not like fat people, which is, you know, gross, but okay. So after a few days, I'd agree to go meet her for a coffee because she liked having a chance for a quick date ending after the coffee was finished if the date was bad. (laughs) That's fair. I agreed, although I was driving a good 30 miles to meet close to where she lived. I remember it was pouring down rain that night on my way to Starbucks. Okay, this person, I'm assuming this is a man because I'm already just like, oh, yep, it says later that he's a guy. I'm already not liking this person. Like, you sound like a dickhead. What? 30 miles? How? That's not that far. Like, calm down. Finally, I arrive. As I approach the door, I notice there being very few people. They appear to be one, an older bald male, a tall, very, a very tall, chubby cleaning lady, a teen mom and her child, and a few employees. I thought, I bet she didn't show or I, or won't because none of these look like the person pictured and described. Upon entry, I immediately smothered by what, uh, what? Upon entry, I immediately smothered by what I thought was the cleaning woman. I was very surprised, shocked, and scared. After an endless bear hug, I step back to observe and catch my breath. Whoa, 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 this was her. Indeed it was. Standing before me was a woman about 5'8", weighing in at about 190 pounds, frizzy hair, the absolute tightest stonewashed jeans ever, 
out of a dumpster looking 1994 starter pullover jacket. Oh my god! This man, okay, I am not liking this. And a gap in the front teeth that would allow her to eat without ever opening her mouth. <gasps> I don't even know if I want to finish this. This guy is so mean. She was ashy skinned, pale, and dirty as if it was the fourth or fifth day on a camping trip showerless. Grossed out, I thought I should at least be a good guy, buy her coffee, and last for 20 minutes before heading home. So I did. We talked. I listened for about five whole minutes about how she lost custody of her child. She was in rehab and on a disability and was basically living in a friend's basement. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you. That doesn't sound amazing for her. So I would understand if maybe you wouldn't want to be involved in that drama. I can I can understand that. I humored the situation and asked what she liked to do. When she got loud and said she loved people watching and proceeded to make fun of everyone in the shop loudly for 10 minutes. Chug, chug. Hey, my coffee's gone and I have to work early. Maybe we'll talk again sometime, I say and get up. She follows me out and tries to get into my passenger side. Okay. (laughs) I'm starting to not like this. Luckily, only one button press on the dongle unlocks only the driver door. She stand in the rain saying she wants a kiss, but I bolt pretending not to see. Well, being 30 miles away where the only Ikea in town is, I decide to salvage the trip and look up for something I really need. Okay, I don't care about any of that. Um. Oh. Oh, she shows up. Okay, I guess I have to read it. I was in the store for about 25% through when I hear, Oh, hey! She says she really likes me, and I tell her I needed something, so I had to stop while I was out. When she gets to the bed section, where there seem to be a lot of families shopping at the moment, she long jumps in reverse onto a bed, starts moaning and attempting sexy poses, and asks to come over to my place. This was all I could take. I dropped my basket of stuff, sprinted out the store, and blocked her number immediately. She tried to chase, but wasn't fast enough. Most scarring online dating experience ever. Okay, you know what? I take back um, what I said. It sounds like um, (laughs) it sounds like she is insane, like actually an insane person. Um, I am sorry, sir. That sounds really gross and terrible, and I'm sorry that you had to deal with that. (laughs) This is why, honestly, guys. I mean, first of all, I would like to just say, I this isn't the main reason I don't like online dating, but. Um, I don't like online dating for a lot of reasons, and this is a a good one where people can easily pretend to be someone else and, or not even like, cause you know what? I bet she kind of did look like the pictures. Like maybe it was her from a while ago and now, you know, she looks like this, you know, whatever. But then her personality is what really was like, oh my God, you are not the person I thought I was talking to. Ooh, tragic for you, sir. Tragic. Okay, on to the next. One of my friends got catfished a couple months ago, and I'm still pretty sad for her. She was messaged by someone on some dating site I've never heard of. She and I hadn't spoken in a while, so I didn't know about the situation until it had gone for at least a few weeks, maybe a couple months. The girl who messaged her really swept her off her feet. My friend told me how lucky she was to find someone who called her beautiful and was so charming. At first, it all sounded wonderful. Hearing about their interactions, I was like, that's great. One problem, they hadn't yet met. Classic. Classic catfish. I asked, how long have you been talking to her? It was a substantial period of time, at least long enough to verify somehow. No verification. Her microphone on her laptop is broken. She's self-conscious about her voice on the phone. Her webcam is broken, so she can't Skype. She ignores me when I ask her to take a picture of herself with some kind of marker so I know she's real. Dude, she's a freaking catfish. Jesus. Just really obviously fake shit. But she's got multiple pictures. She sent me one. I sent it through Google. Came back from a porn site. I had to break the news to her. I think this girl isn't who she says she is. I suspected that it could even be a guy, but I didn't say that. I told her not to get attached until she could verify that the person was legit. But I already knew that it wasn't going to happen. And my friend had broken the first cardinal rule. Don't get emotionally invested in someone you've never met. She had already done so. Well, you know, that makes sense. It's a good rule. It's a good rule. 
She wouldn't believe that this girl she was talking to was potentially fake. I mean, she suspected, but she refused to believe. It went on a little longer. It was strengthened when the girl called her from a blocked number. Anyways, I don't know the exact details, but eventually she accepted that this thing was fake and she confronted the girl and the girl was a guy. They had already had cyber sex and all sorts of things. I just hope my friend didn't get any sexual pictures of herself. I haven't asked because I don't want to rub in. I already rub an already raw situation. I feel so sorry for her. She was really hoping this beautiful girl was going to be her girlfriend. So sad. Oh, that is sad. But honestly, that is a good that's a good rule to have for all all friends who are online dating. Um, don't get emotionally attached to someone that you've never met. It's just like the person that you're texting is absolutely not going to be the person that you meet in real life. It's just like, it's just facts. I'll tell you right now, I am a terrible texter. Like, I feel like I'm boring. I'm not very fun. And in real life, I'm super fun and not boring. <laughs> no, but I mean like in real life, I'm so completely different than the way that I text. So, and if that's just me and I'm not genuinely trying to trick somebody, like just imagine the people who are obviously genuinely trying to trick somebody. So it's just, that's why, again, that's why I don't know if I trust online dating. It's just kind of sketchy to me. But anyway, this actually, (laughs) this reminds me a lot of, well, okay, here's my little catfishing story. And it wasn't even really a catfishing story, but um, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes in the past, um, me and my friends, you know, would talk to a bunch of boys on Tinder and stuff like that. And, you know, some of the guys would send some explicit pictures, whatever. So they're, they're sending their pics and it was sent to my friend, Olivia. She was on, um, the podcast a few episodes ago. And, um, she got sent a dick pic and I could just tell, I was like, this has to be fake. There is no way this is a real dick. <laughs> like, sorry, dude, but huh? <laughs> that does not match you. So I did, you know, some reverse Google searching because I learned that from the TV show. And yeah, it was a fake dick. He like sent us a fake dick. So we called him out on it. Then he sends another one. And he's like, no, it's real. Searched it again. Fake. Like, he just kept sending us pictures on the internet that weren't him. Like, and I was like, sir. And so we kept calling him out. And then eventually I think he blocked us. But I was just like, you're so dumb. Like, uh, yeah, that's that's honestly what this boils down to is catfishing people are honestly kind of stupid. And I don't want to be super mean because I know that like, A lot of these people are just very insecure with themselves, but it's like, you're dumb and you're also playing with people. So this person obviously just doing the dick pics, like you're an actual idiot. Like, huh? Like, what are you getting out of this? Anyway, next story. Just got catfished about 15 minutes ago. Oh, (laughs) Jesus. Okay. And I'm honestly pretty upset about it. I felt myself getting emotionally attached to this guy and I was hoping things could work out between us. We've been sending each other extremely long messages for the last three weeks. And after reading this thread earlier today, I got suspicious as to why he had not asked me out yet. In the message I sent him today, I told him I was probably going to delete my OkCupid account because soon, uh, oh, delete my OkCupid account soon because I was done with it and because he hadn't asked me out yet. He responded with this, warning, it's long. (laughs) Haha, well, if you're wondering why I haven't asked you out, I'm unfortunately going to have to add to your weird okay Oh my gosh. I am the worst weirder. Weirder? Reader! Oh my god. Okay. (laughs) Haha, well, if you're wondering why I haven't asked you out yet, I'm unfortunately going to have to add to your weird okay cupid experience bank and possibly creeper vault right now. And may just have you deleting your profile in no time. It's complicated. Oh my god, I'm nervous. <laughs> so basically, I'm not said username. I am his friend. A few weeks ago, whenever I first messaged you, I was messaging girls for him out of boredom. He was happy to see if I could set him up with any dates. And I was having fun with it. Because where I live, I can't really use the site. My area is small and the girls are uh, proper rednecks and single mothers. I should have asked you out for him a lot sooner before we started getting into the long convos. 
but there was a weird dynamic going on that quickly led to deep messages. You were also actually fun to talk to, so I ended up wanting to chat with you myself for too long, I guess. He was always happy to meet you, but it got weird because we had spoken so much, and you'd probably end up meeting him confused and wondering why his personality was so much different from online. It kind of got to the point where I didn't want to cut off the convo, but at the same time, I didn't want to set you up for disappointment or something given the circumstances, so it was awkward. But yeah, to clear up any confusion, we both do the same thing, actually. And most of the stuff I've told you applies to both of us. So there shouldn't be too much ambiguity with the content of the messages. Just uh, the personalities are a bit different. So ultimately, I could actually set you guys up right now. He's happy to meet you slash ask you out. But if it would be more, but it would be more like a blind date. You guys would have to laugh about me the whole time. Awkward. Haha. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, if you're wondering why the fuck this dude hasn't asked you out yet, or at the very least, I hope you know you now have some clarity. I know personally I fucking hate ambiguity when dealing with girls, so hopefully this kills that for you. And by the way, what's wrong with you? What? <laughs> if you hadn't written such enticing, intriguing messages to respond to this, wouldn't have ha had to go down so weird. Jeez. <gasps> oh my god. Wait a minute. Wait a wait a freaking minute this guy is pretending to be his friend or i guess he's messages girls for his friend i'm sorry the only time that i have ever done that with my friends um is in a joke setting we have never messaged guys being like oh do you want me to message this guy for you so you can see if you like him huh no the only times we have ever done that is to honestly fuck around with some guys sorry sorry about it but that's what we do so this doesn't make any sense it's going on and on and on then he's like but actually you know what's wrong with you why are you so fun to respond to you ruined this whole thing and it's actually your fault huh i this man yeah so that's it i'm extraordinarily upset i could feel completely violated and weirded out and now i really want to get off this site Oh, and if either of you two who did this to me read this, both of you can go fuck yourself. What's the fastest way I can get over this slash forget it even happened? Ugh, yeah, girly. That sucks. Oh my god, and I can't believe that. Okay. I was about to say, I can't believe that happened 15 minutes ago. This was also posted seven years ago. So, I'm assuming she's probably fine now. <laughs> Since it was seven years ago. But, Jesus. That is what a freaking weirdo i also just the audacity of men to always somehow twist it on you he's literally pretending to be his friend and then it's like Ugh, but like you are the one who made it weird so <laughs> it's like no sir you did you did when you started pretending to be your friend okay moving on next one. Ooh, i got one for you guys granted this was about 10 years ago circa 2002 Oh, Jesus. Yeah, we're going on about 20 years now. <laughs> I was a young, graceless lad of 14 and had just picked up a copy of Sims Online for Christmas. <gasps> Stop it. Are you going to meet this person on Sims? I'm screaming. Screaming. Met a girl named Chloe, whom was my age, and we started budding a friendship that turned into a dreaded online relationship that lasted about a year. My best friend at the time was so enthralled that I had a girlfriend in California, which led to convincing her that she should hook her up with one of her friends. My best friend and her friend also started an online relationship for the next year or so. Oh my gosh, what the heck? Of course, we did all the basics, exchanged photos, long time phone calls to talk about our dreams after high school, oh God. <laughs> becoming an adult and arranging plans to meet each other over the summer. It was a classic romance in the digital age. Just like most online relationships, it was a complete sham. <laughs> but how I found out still makes me chuckle uncontrollably to this day. I couldn't fly out to California because she was moving to Massachusetts. Classic. And she couldn't fly here to Michigan to see me before then. I was upset, but had plenty of other things to keep me occupied so it didn't ruin my summer. However, my best friend had decided he was going to fly out there to meet his girl because he didn't have such complications. Oh no. Then, while he was away, I got a call from his mother. She had put the pieces together when he flew out to Massachusetts rather than California and wanted to inform me that whom I had an online relationship was... Oh my gosh. 
that whom I'd, I had been in an online relationship was not whom she said she was. Is that the correct word of whom? Like, can't you just say it was not who she said she was? Why do you have to say whom? You're messing me up. <laughs> in fact, the private detective she hired informed her Chloe was two years younger than she claimed to be, and her best friend was not only 25 years older than she claimed to be, but also Chloe's mother. Ah! <laughs> no. To top it all off, my best friend at this time had known for months, but flew out to Massachusetts to hook up with her mom anyways and played along because no one wanted to hurt my feelings by telling me the truth. Oh my God. What? I learned a lot from that day about expectations, friendships, and the internet, but I'll never be able to live this down to my family. Whom constantly? You're using whom wrong. <laughs> it, there's no way whom is supposed to be there. I'll never be able to live this down to my family. Whom constantly told me? Who? Who constantly told you? Okay. It's a huge mistake from the beginning, and now you guys. Ha! Ha! Okay, well, someone commented saying, your 14-year-old friend hooked up with this girl's mom, or were they caught before it happened? And then he commented back, from what I recall, they hooked up, which spun into the mother becoming depressed about being a pedo, then guilt-tripping him into staying into the relationship longer as he white-knighted for true love beyond age differences. I severed tides with all parties fairly quickly after I found out. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. That one was a weird one. Um first of all, I can't believe you met on Sims Online. That's iconic. Um so if you were 14, that means Chloe was 12, which you. And then the mom, oh, that is sick. The mom, that's actually disgusting. Um Yeah, and your friend is a weirdo. Uh, whole thing. Bad. I don't like it. I don't like it for you. Glad you severed ties, because ew. Also, work on your grammar a little bit. I know this was seven years ago, so maybe, maybe you fixed it. I'm sick of seeing whom. I don't think I've ever used whom in my entire life, so. Thanks. All right. Okay, so here's the story. There's this girl in my MMO guild. I have no idea what that is. Goes by the name Candy Kisses. What is MMO Guild? <laughs> is it a video game? Am I like really stupid? Who posted pictures of herself. Right away, a red flag went up because the person in the photos did not match her personality at all. She is the kind of person that doesn't approve of excessive swearing or inappropriate names. She's pretty Christian and often praying for people. <laughs> they put praying in um quotes <laughs> she's praying for people somehow oh someone i knew in the guild took the email she had listed on the application and searched it for searched for it in facebook and found an account for someone completely different came up this dawn smith person she had previously previously listed a skype handle heaven lays <laughs> which comes up to an account with the girl in the photo she's claiming to be. But when a search is done using the email she had supplied, the woman from the Facebook, who is who she actually is, showed up. She was confronted about the Facebook page and completely denied it. It's a long shot, but I was hoping someone would know how to find out who is in the photos she is passing off as herself. I tried to do the reverse Google image search that she did on the movie Catfish, but it must have been disabled since there's no Facebook or other social media results. Oh, oh, and then they use a picture. Okay. This is the person who I'm looking to contact. And here are the photos who she's claiming to be. Um, you have to have a photo bucket account. I don't even know what that is. All right. Well, I guess we won't know. Um, that one was a little weird. I, we didn't really get a whole lot of tea out of that one. It just sounds like she's a catfish, which we already knew. This is why we're on the catfish thread. Ooh, okay. Here's one. I like reading the ones that are really long because it gives me gives me more story, obviously. Got a pretty good one here. Warning, wall of text coming. Bring it on, baby. 
A girl with very scantily clad pics winks at me. No message. <laughs> Wait. What? Why are we starting off like that? Okay. Winks at me. What does that mean? Okay, whatever. Being a red-blooded American male. Oh, God. Maybe I don't want to read this. <laughs> I wrote her back. The conversation instantly turned sexual and very forward. Wow, well, you are a red-blooded American male, so I guess I'm not too surprised, am I? Okay, but she's using good spelling and grammar, so I feel like she could be real. Wait. <laughs> Those are your red flags for if someone's fake, is that if they just don't use good spelling or grammar? Sorry, but I'm pretty sure fakes can also know how to spell, so yikes for you. For a few weeks, we continued talking over email, and we were using Snapchat to send pics to each other. Pics are viewable for between 1 to 10 seconds. You set the time. Sir, do you think we don't know what Snapchat is? Oh my god. Oh my god, he's actually mansplaining Snapchat in this thing. He, <laughs> he literally says, pics are viewable for between 1 to 10 seconds. You set the time and disappear for good. Ultimate sexting tool. We know what Snapchat is. We know. Granted, this was posted seven years ago, but we know. We know what Snapchat is. Okay, I'm already getting annoyed. She sent me some extremely hot pics that, again, seemed fishy. These cleavage shots from her bathroom mirror that looked like they might be different people. Naked shots where I couldn't see her face or verify it was actually her. Okay, well, to be fair... Um, if a girl's sending you nudes on Snapchat, she probably shouldn't be showing her face anyway because you red-blooded American males like to take that and then use it against her. So now granted, she probably is a catfish because again, we're on the, we're on the Reddit, but still, anyway, I'm just pissed at this guy already. All right. But she seemed totally normal and actually pretty smart and funny in her emails. I am so mad at him. <laughs> Because she couldn't be funny. She couldn't be funny or smart. Okay, I need to stop. So the signals I was getting were totally mixed. I figured I'd see her in person and instantly know whether she was bullshitting, but we never got the chance. So repeated attempts to get together over the next few weeks were always dashed, often at the last minute. Something would suddenly come up. Admittedly, I had to cancel once, but she canceled on me like three to four times, only raising my level of skepticism. She had this sob story about how her ex-boyfriend left her out of nowhere and how she was still pre pretty badly bruised by this and how she needed some time to get her head straight. She was on OkCupid. See, the thing is, these people are using the worst dating apps. OkCupid and Plenty of Fish. That's like literally where all the catfishes come from. Like I am pretty positive it's either Facebook, OkCupid, or plenty of fish because that's like neve is constantly like oh you're using this app oh we're doing this again like come on guys okay she was on okay cupid looking for a fun fuck buddy but had started to develop feelings for me and now all these emotions were coming back of being hurt okay fine whatever <laughs> i took i told her take care of your shit and get back to me when you're not so fucked in the head oh my god what if this person's literally real and he's just an asshole? In the meantime, I keep kept investigating her photos. One photo she posted of her was laying down on a towel at a beach featuring her huge cans. <laughs> oh my god. Much larger than the cans shown in two of her other pics. And as big as her cans in pic number four. <laughs> oh my god. That's really funny. Also, why do we keep saying cans? Just say she has boobs. Ew. Okay. She explained it away by telling me she got a boob job and the first two pics were pre-surgery. Okay, fine. But I kept asking her to send a verifying pic. Shoe on the head. Holding up three pictures. Oh, th three fingers. Anything. And she kept dodging it and turning it back on me by calling me paranoid and neurotic. Maybe I was being paranoid and neurotic. Ooh, okay. I don't love that she said that because... Obviously, if you say that, then you're, you're a catfish, so. But then I found the ultimate nabbers. Huh? 
I found the ultimate nabbers via Google image search. Okay. First, her alleged pre-boob job pic was found on a party pic site dated October 2011. This pic of her with giant cans was found on all of these teen jerk-off sites as early as February of 2010. So there it was. Proof she was lying. Okay, you won. You got it, dude. Even better, it turns out the beach picture was associated with a Redditor who regular, regularly submits to Reddit Gone Wild. <laughs> oh, God. Maybe I should take a break from Reddit. <laughs> it's all over the web. So I contacted this chick through Reddit, and she was totally cool about it, if a little miffed. She assured me that the beach pic was her, and the OK Cupid girl I had been chatting with was most definitely not her. She even sent me another pic of her in the exact bathing suit to help bust the catfisher. So I emailed the catfisher one last time. Also, I love that they were emailing. So you're using Snapchat and emailing. Why aren't you texting? That's weird. Or even just like chatting on Snapchat. I wonder if he doesn't know that you can do that. Because I know he mansplained Snapchat to us earlier. But I bet he doesn't even really know what else you can do on that app. Anyway... So he emails the catfisher one last time. I now have ironclad proof that the beach shot isn't you. So do you want to tell me why you've been posting and sending pics that aren't you? Why you lied about it when I confronted you? And why I should still be talking to you? Oh, and by the way, you may not know a lot of states are passing anti-online impersonation laws. (laughs) You could get in deep shit for this. I'd recommend taking down any pics that aren't you, that aren't you like, that aren't like you immediately. Okay, good email, dude. The next morning I log on and find she's not only deleted her OkCupid account, but also deactivated the semi-anonymous Gmail account she had been using to contact me. She's gone. We had sent hundreds of emails back and forth and dozens of photos all over Snapchat, so they're gone. (laughs) Thank you again. (laughs) Jesus. I never got her phone number because her psycho ex-husband still pays for her phone and monitors its usage. That was her story, and I know, another giant red flag. Yeah, that was a big one. Big one right there, dude. Um, my only regret is that I'll probably never find out exactly what happened because I now have no way to contact her. Not su- super worried about it. She doesn't know my last name or where I live. She does have my phone number and semi-anonymous email address. <laughs> the only pics I ever sent were with her were on snapchat so they're gone forever unless she used another camera to photograph them while they were on the screen which is a difficult maneuver and doubtful she could pull off oh my god okay i would just like to say that is not a difficult maneuver because i have done that so it's actually very easy you just gather up all your friends someone sends you a pic and you take a picture of it it's that fucking easy so This guy is just a big fucking idiot, but what are you going to do? Next one. Ooh, this is another big one. Um, okay, but a little sidetrack. That guy was just an asshole. I don't know if I even liked, like, I kind of wanted him to get catfished because he just sounded like a dickhead. Like, ugh, anyway. Let's go to the next one. Here goes. In the autumn of my junior year of high school, I was added by this random, incredibly stunning girl on Facebook. We'll call her C. See, again, Facebook. Why the actual hell are you just accepting random friend requests from a girl that you don't know on Facebook? (laughs) There you go, you (laughs) dumbass. Okay, continuing. Also, I'm actually loving that all these women are the one who's who is catfishing. We only had one guy so far. It's actually kind of iconic. Okay. She had also friended a bunch of other students in my grade, telling us that she was moving from Pennsylvania to my city and wanted to get to know her future classmates before the big move. Okay, I guess that's a little harmless. For a few days, there was a good amount of talk about this girl among my classmates, considering she was unlike anyone here. Adept painter, outspoken feminist, vegan, loved bright eyes oh my god (laughs) and as stated before the exact vestige of beauty oh my god 
Immediately, we felt a connection through the Facebook instant messages. She was so deep and sincere in our conversations. I would stay up late just messaging back and forth for weeks. Wow. The way that he described her was literally just like a, you know, like a indie girl. And she's not, she's not like other girls. She likes bright eyes. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Our trust grew, and so did my anticipation for the late February date she would arrive. I still feel a faint shimmer of that giddiness that would recur over two years. Jesus, dude. Our instant messages turned into texts, turned into phone calls late into the night. We told each other so much. I'll never forget the time she told me she was raped as a young girl. Ah! (laughs) Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Why are you, why, why, why did you say that? Um, okay. I asked her what happened and she told me later. She, and she told me. Later, C expressed her admiration for my concern. I didn't say, so sorry that happened to you. I genuinely cared and wanted to know. Such an intimate event in our life. I don't like that. Ew, 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 ew. First of all, I don't know. Obviously, since this is a catfish, I don't know if that's a real story she told. And if it's fake, that's disgusting. Do not, do not literally fake that you were raped. No, nope, nope, no, 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 no. Um, two, I don't know if it's just me, but it feels weird that he like really wanted to know about it. I don't know. I don't know. We're moving on. Fast forward to February. My excitement crumbled when she informed me that her father had an affair. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude. And caused their move to my city to be shelved immediately. Oh, classic. I was crushed, but retained hope in the future with this girl. By now, her novelty had worn off with the other students. But for some reason, I kept with it. Yeah, because you're dumb. <laughs> there's, there's your fucking reason. Because you're dumb. Months rolled on and we continuously grew closer and closer. She told me of her life in a small town, Pennsylvania. Her dog, Ruggles. Ruggles? Okay. Her dreams and aspirations, her political views, which we frequently butted heads on, but it just added to the mutual admiration. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little stab at this. Um, If she's, you know, an indie girl, um, she's a feminist, loves bright eyes, you know, whatever. I'm assuming her political views lean a little more to the left, which means you're probably more to the right, which I personally do not like. But anyway... Never did it cross my mind that she was anyone other than C. I don't like how he just said C. Can we name her Clara or something? Didn't make any sense in my mind for her not to be. It was like dividing by zero. The concept just couldn't register. Oh my gosh. This guy has such a way with words. I love this. <laughs> love his stories pinpointing for us. We had a bit of falling out about six months after we first conversed, but renewed the close friendship soon after with intense vigor. Wait, what? So you had a following out? What uh, what happened there? Hello? (laughs) I want the tea. One night she told me that she loved me. Of course I said it back. I really, truly meant it. We began our long-distance relationship with such strength, probably the strongest relationship I had up until that point. Really? I had a lot of problems with being faithful before then. Oh, but I stayed true to her throughout everything. A testament to what she meant to me. (gasps) Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How old are you? Where was she? Where was she? Were you going to high school? Junior year of high school. Junior year of high school. And you already were having problems being faithful to people. Okay. Okay, sir. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. That's kind of gross. And, I, I mean, I guess I get it because I did know some people in my school who were the same. And all my friends who are listening, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Um, who couldn't be faithful in their junior year of high school. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, but that's kind of, that seriously. Oh my god, wait, how... Okay, there's another part of this where they talk about raping, and I don't want to talk about that, because why? Basically, it happened more times, so, okay, 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 skipping through that. 
okay. Why is this part of the story? <sighs> okay. I'm going to have to say it. I'm just going to breeze through it. While they were together, it happened three or four times. And then she got kicked out of her home and estranged by her family, addicted to heroin, and dealt with it, and lost all of her friends in the process. Ugh. Okay, so that's happening while they're still together. And so he, who am I to tell my girlfriend that I don't believe her? So I stayed supportive, even though the countless fights we had, she was rather emotionally unstable, as one could imagine. But I stayed with her because I really believed in a future with her. Her voice matched so perfectly with whom she claimed to be, and she spoke with such passion about things she felt that it was impossible to not be lured into loving Clara. <laughs> Naming her Clara. I had daydreamt numerous times of being a political power couple. Huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. We would one day rule the world together. We had made many plans to meet and begin life together, but each time in that last moment, something came up and she had to cancel. Once, she wanted, to she wanted me to accompany her on a trip to Europe, although very alluring was entirely unfeasible for me and very unthinkable for my parents, who remained skeptical throughout my in the entire two years I knew Clara. Fast forward again to the summer of 2012. I'm still in a long-distance relationship with Clara. Jesus, fuck, when did this start? Ugh, I don't know, it just says 2012, but I'm assuming June. It's probably like, he probably graduated high school. Oh, God. I'm still fully enchanted by this girl, writing songs about her at work, constantly daydreaming about what that first fateful meet would be like. She was... Okay, this guy is insane. <laughs> she gets the great idea for us to meet up in New York, see this concert together, and travel the Atlantic Northeast together. I finally had the money to support such an endeavor, so I go all in. I don't know. Buy my bus tickets, pack my bags, tell my parents and friends. However, a week before my trip, my mom approaches me about Clara. She said that she had called Clara's hometown sheriff and inquired about her family. Being the sheriff of a small town, he knew everyone there, but definitely didn't any didn't know anyone with the last name of Clara's. For some reason, I didn't believe my mom. <laughs> really? Really? After two years of being with this person, you didn't believe? <sighs> Come on. Tale is old as time. Okay. La, 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 la. Denial. I accused her of wanting to sabotage something I believed in because she didn't want me to grow up and be apart from her. Oh my god. How foolish. But after cooling off, I couldn't ignore the facts, so I give Clara a call and tell her all about the revelations. She denies it all, and I still want to believe her. So I ask her for a picture of her face with her driver's license, something concrete. She had never actually sent me a picture of her. You can tell the difference between an on-spot, on-the-spot phone picture and a social media album picture. I guess I couldn't. Since she sent me a grainy, luminescent profile picture, I knew something was terribly wrong. I pled for her to tell me what's going on, so she says that she will give me a call at 11 a.m. the following morning and explain everything. Oh, jeez. Clara actually turned out to be Sarah. <laughs> it just says S. A year younger than I looked absolutely nothing like her pictures and had no intention of ever coming to my city. Her personality, she claims, is all real. Just everything else was not she claims to have actually been raped once, but understandably, I doubt that still. Before I could ask her why she did this for me, did this to me for two years, my disgust got the better of me. I told her I never wanted to speak to her again, and I hung up. I still have so many questions left unanswered. Why did she contact me in particular? Why play this game with no intention of ever following through? To this day, the betrayal of the amount of trust I invested in her haunts my conscience nearly 21 Wait, when did he post this seven years ago so now he is 28 i hope he's okay <laughs> and still grapple with how i let someone build a perfect siren just for me to only destroy it and that and the dreams i had made for the future together i'm moving on but i'd be lying if i said she hadn't affected my life drastically for a time i dropped off the world and brooded darkly about making an off-the-record trip to confront her 
but reason came back and I decided against it. But temptation is always present. Jeez. Jesus. <laughs> that one was juicy as hell. Um, that guy was very interesting in the way that he spoke and typed. Um, I didn't love the rape claim she made. And again, I don't even want to talk about it. Um, but yeah, that's a lot. That was a lot. Um, I'm going to be really honest though. I feel like, I feel like he really over romanticized her and I'm not going to obviously take the side of the catfish because you know she was not who she says she was she was playing him for two years like totally leading him on whatever but oh my god I mean I don't even like when you're that obsessed with someone that's not healthy that is not what you should be doing you shouldn't just like like that's crazy that's like not what love is that's like lust like you're so enamored by this person I mean, just the way that he's talking about her, like, Jesus Christ, dude. Maybe she was cool to talk to, but my God. Anyway, yikes. <laughs> yikes for you. That does not sound great. I'm hoping now you're 28, hoping that maybe things are different now. Because, yikes. Okay, I'm going to find one more here we go. Okay. This is going to be our last story of the day. It's a long one. Not as long as that last one. Oh my God. Wait, what? <laughs> Sorry. I just got a little glimpse and I'm already scared. Okay. Finally, I can contribute something to the community. Please be patient if I make a ton of formatting errors. I'm only a petty mobile user. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, I used to play this game, this online RPG. God, I don't know anything about games. I mean, not that I was a, a self-proclaimed gamer by any means, but holy crap, I don't know anything. I had played it for maybe six years at this point, on and off. One day, my friend, who I met on the game, and I were talking and trying to figure out ways to get banned. <laughs> Why? We knew of the sexting prostitution rings that would happen at the docks. Oh my god. Just the way that you, uh, people would use in the game money for services. So we decided to mess with one of the prostitutes. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Okay. I brought her back to my virtual home and we, and a few dirty exchanges were said before I finally said, KK, I want to poop all over your face and mouth. <laughs> what? Strangely enough, she was cool with it, and I had to pull the plug on that convo because I ran out of disgusting things to say. We started to talk, and I found out she was from Florida and happened to be a year younger than me. I was 18, and she said she was initial, and she said she initially said she was 20, but then confessed she was lying and said she was my age. Okay. Eventually, after having normal conversations for a few hours, I give her the email I made specifically to keep in contact with random people I met in a game. That's honestly kind of smart. Because, hey, who wants that girl you met after asking a shit on her face to clog up your regular inbox? <laughs> Fair. As time went on, we emailed more and more, just talking about life and what we were up to and everything in between. We talked for maybe about a year and a half. She had sent numerous photos of... She had seen numerous photos of me, but I had only seen two of her. Okay, see, I never understand this. Like, this is the stage where I'm just like, you lost me. Because I could not imagine emailing someone for a year and a half. I can barely imagine messaging someone once <laughs> that I am interested in. So I don't understand how you could email for a year and a half. And why would you constantly be sending messages of yourself if you haven't gotten anything from them? Like if you've only gotten two pictures, I'll be like, okay, no more pictures for you. Like I need a little more. Whatever. I went on vacation to Europe and promised to send her the photos when I got back, and I did. But then after I sent her the emails, I jokingly started to suggest that she was a pedophile. Why would you do that? <laughs> I know, it's hard to imagine a joking way to ask if someone <laughs> to ask someone if they are a pedophile, but I managed to do it. 
After a week of me asking to see another photo of her and refusing, I started to piece it together in my mind. She was from Florida. She says she was going to school in Washington. Doesn't show me any photos. Sent emails like a stereotypical American teenage girl to the point that everything she talked about was straight out of the OC or some shit. One night I say, I know you're not who you say you are. And she got mad. And I called her a pedophile and she, that she needed to bugger off. I panicked. This stranger had hundreds of photos of my trip to Europe, most of them with me in them. So she had a gallery to use for her next victim. I started to believe she had already used my Europe photos to lure someone else in from online. I also used my phone to message her on eBuddy or something, and the account was linked to my old phone number. The day I, after I cut ties with her, I got a phone call from Florida of someone laughing, so I shit my pants, thought I was going to die, and changed my phone number. But a year passes, and I decide to email her again, and I just ask, who are you? And they responded, do you really want to know? And I said, yes. She told me she was from Florida. That picture wasn't of her. It was her friend. She was actually only 16 years old. When we first met, her name wasn't even Sarah. The whole time, I believed her name was Sarah, and it wasn't. She gave me an, gave me her Twitter name so I could see for myself that it was actually her. And then I asked her to send her pictures of her holding up very a variety of objects and signs with the name on them. Again, I made a fake Snapchat account for her to send to them to me because fuck her, she lied to me. She told me the reason she lied was because she wanted to sext but didn't want to give out any real info. And then we started talking. She was so deep in her lie, she couldn't climb out of it. Oddly enough, I lied to her at first about minor details. Then I admitted those lies. She could have used that as a way, as her way out, but didn't. Huh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so. Yikes. Also, ugh, a 16-year-old with an 18-year-old. She wants to sext. Really? No. <laughs> no. Uh, also, why was he so convinced she was a pedophile? That seems weird to me. Like, what vibes was he getting that she was a pedophile? Because what if, like, what if she is a pedophile? <laughs> what if she's lying again? I don't know. Anyway, so that concludes this week's episode. Um, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> like I said. I, you know, when I listened to the What We Said podcast um, of them doing the catfish stories, I was like, damn it, I have to do this too because it's so freaking funny. Um, obviously, I feel so terrible for all the people who did get catfished. Everyone just needs to be careful on the internet. Um, a big, I loved that rule that that person made. Don't become attached to someone that you've never met. I think that is very, very true because... Uh, I don't know. In my opinion, I don't love talking to people on the internet. And so, of course, my opinion is going to be tainted. But, you know, people are going to talk to people on the internet. So what I have to say, my little disclaimer, is that if you're talking to people on the internet, um, one, I don't think it's really safe to send pictures back and forth just because you never know what they're going to do with them. So maybe don't do that, whether it's explicit or just your face, whatever. Maybe don't do that. And yeah, biggest rule of thumb, if you can tell that this person will never meet up with you, will never call you, never FaceTime, whatever, stop talking to that person. Just stop it. Just end it all. It's not worth it. The person is most likely lying and you're just going to get hurt in the end anyway. So why even, why even do that to yourself? Like go meet someone in real life. And they'll probably still suck, but it's fine. <laughs> At least you know who you're talking to is who you're talking to. So that's my little disclaimer. Be careful on the internet, folks. Um, and yeah, so that was this week's episode. And don't worry, there's going to be another episode next week. Um, I'm hoping that now that my schedule is a little more calm, I can now figure out the days that I have off. We're going to be doing weekly again. So sorry about last week, but I had a lot of fun with this episode, so I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will talk to you all next week. Bye!